Good morning and welcome back to day 27 of Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. So yesterday we discussed, oh, wrong thing. We discussed um, we discussed saying I'm sorry and listening. Okay. So, and we said it's better to listen, to listen versus listening to speak. And we're going to talk more about listening in chapter five. Um, and then we read this thing about apologizing and um, I gave you guys a little bit of a homework assignment and I told you to keep track of what you wrote down. Um, but I wanted you where you would normally say, I'm sorry. I wanted you to use gratitude instead and show thanks to those people that you would normally apologize to. So um, some examples of when you could say I'm sorry versus thank you is I apologize for the delay. Instead, you could say thank you for your patience. Um, I'm sorry for talking so much. Instead, you could say thank you for listening. I'm sorry I have to go. Instead, you could say thank you for giving me a call. Um, I'm sorry for being late. Instead, you could say, thank you so much for waiting. And then I'm so sorry for getting emotional. You could say, thank you for giving me a safe space to talk. So just different ways that you can use that gratitude versus apologizing all the time. Because remember, your brain believes what you tell it so if you're constantly saying i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry then your brain's gonna go oh she must be a sorry person so if you show gratitude things work out a lot better for you in the long run okay so let's go ahead and jump into today's lesson set clear expectations i think that we should be seeing other people your boyfriend or girlfriend might tell you but I thought we were starting to get serious, you might reply. Um, no offense, but like, not really. Well, what about everything you told me about your feelings and stuff? I didn't really mean it that way. How often have you seen someone get hurt because another person led them on by not communicating their real feelings? Our tendency is to want to flatter and please others, and as a result, we often get unclear or unrealistic expectations. To please your dad at the moment, you might say, sure, dad, I can help you fix up the car this weekend, but realistically, you're booked the entire weekend and don't have a second. In the end, you disappoint your dad. You would have been better off being re realistic up front. Hey, thanks for the opportunity. Can we do it next weekend? I'm a little busy. Okay, to develop trust, we need to avoid sending vague messages or implying something that is not true or not likely to happen. Maya says, I had a great time, Jeff. Let's for sure do something next weekend. What she really feels is, I had a good time. Let's just be friends. But since she's created false expectations, Jeff will continue to ask her out and Maya will continue to turn him down saying, maybe next week. Everyone would have been better off if Maya had been honest from the get-go. It's hard to do though, but don't be afraid to turn someone or something down. You'll be hurting them more in the long run if you string them along and then dump them. Whenever you get into a new job, relationship or setting, you're better off taking the time to lay all expectations out on the table so that everyone is on the same page. So many withdrawals are made because one party assumes one thing and another party assumes something else. Your boss might say, I need you to work this Tuesday night. You might reply, I'm sorry, but I babysit my brother on Tuesday nights for my mom. You should have told me that when I hired you. Now what am I going to do? Build trust through telling it like it is and laying out clear expectations right from the front. Okay, a personal challenge. I'd like to leave you with a personal challenge. 
pick one important relationship in your life that's damaged. It may be a parent or a sibling or a friend. Now commit yourself to rebuilding that relationship one deposit at a time. The other person may be suspicious at first and think, what's up with you? Do you want something from me? But be patient and stick with it. Remember, it may take months to build up what took months to tear down. So, um, but little by little, deposit by deposit, they'll begin to see what that you're genuine and that you really want to be friends. I've never said it would be easy, but I promise you, it will be worth it. So, that's your homework. Personal challenge. It's not just going to be tonight. This book has been a process. You've been working on yourself for the last 27 days. And if you include weekends in that, even longer. So, don't stop now pick that friend sibling family member parent whoever and fix that relationship and like i said it's not going to happen overnight small acts of kindness loyalty trust showing gratitude and apologizing when necessary okay be honest and upfront It'll go so far for you, I promise. All right, I hope you've had a wonderful um, experience here today and I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Toodle do.